So thanks to Stream Gear Talk on YouTube, who's a fellow content creator who did a video on the Beacon Studio and found something really cool and niche or wherever for the Beacon Studio to turn it into a wireless microphone receiver. And that's pretty much what I did here with the Comica VM30. We're gonna get into it in a second, but I came up with this idea because I have the Comica VM30. I've done two videos on it and I've used it multiple times for a lot of videos. And I really like it because of the use case scenario of doing something like this, where you essentially can handhold the microphone and go into different positions. As long as you have it going into your computer, the only downside of it is that when I was using this microphone, I would use it going into my camera with a USB capture card from Elgato, the CamLink 4K, and it would go into there and I was able to grab that audio source or wherever and bring it to Wavelink and apply VSTs and plugins. It sounded a lot way, like way better than what you're hearing right now. I've used it in several videos. You can go back and watch on my channel uh, with me using this microphone and doing that. But in my personal opinion, this is probably the next way of using this if you're going to get a Beacon Studio or wherever. And the reason why I'm telling you right now with the Comica VM30 is because Comica has dropped their VM40 and there is a combo pack. It's a little bit expensive. When I say a little bit expensive, admittedly, it's pretty expensive. But what it happens is that it comes with a combo pack of two microphones wirelessly. And on top of that, the microphones have 32-bit float built in. So that means you can record into the microphone internally and it has a lot of recording hours wherever applied to it so essentially what you could do is record with obs or any other recording software or wherever record reaction videos all that stuff wire with wireless microphones hand holding having on a boom pole you know having it further away from your camera setup and stuff you don't have to have long cables connecting wherever to your pc all that stuff and especially if you have a maybe a dual PC setup, all that stuff. It's less wires for you to have as long as you remember to charge the microphones. But what you can do is have the Beacon Studio EQing the microphone for you in your recording. Or what you could do is if something happens, God forbid your audio sounds bad or whatever, for whatever reason in that session with the Beacon Studio, because again, noise suppression, instead of I would say background noise removal, what you could do is just take the files from the microphones themselves and put it into your editing software and EQ them. So you have a backup recording of whatever you recorded. Obviously you will have to sync it up in post, but essentially you can get that information. And on top of that, you can watch it because the Comica VM40 has a mobile app and you can enable settings, change things or wherever from your phone or wherever. You don't have to go to a computer or do anything like that. So, so future editing the squid here, I wanted to go ahead and emphasize that you don't have to go out and get the Comica VM40 if it's too expensive for you, whether it's the single mic or the dual mic or wherever. I know a lot of people probably won't have the money for that stuff. And they're like, why can you sit here and recommend something so expensive and stuff and it's just kind of me bouncing ideas to be able to use something creative for your setup for those who are doing reaction videos or those who are doing podcasts and stuff like that i think having the internal recording with the comica vm40 and having the processing being done on the beacon studio as well as having your eq and all that stuff being done on the beacon studio itself and saving you time in your editing so you don't have to sit there and EQ the microphone unless you for some reason you need that internal recording audio it's going to be really good for those who are doing podcasts and reaction videos or something like that and if you wanted to take a step further but you don't really care about having internal recording you can get something like the Comica Venmo Q which is a four microphone person set up or wherever to where you can have up to four microphones on one module going into the Beacon Studio you just don't have internal recording but you also have the option of putting lapel mics in every single transmitter so you can even get better even better audio and the comica audio devices at least in my experience on the ones i have tested and tried both of the vm30 and the comica Venmo q are the ones that i recommend to people and again i would imagine since the videos i have seen about the comica vm40 still trying to get my hands on it but i think this will be a really good setup again for those who are in two-person setup or wherever as far as streaming maybe doing reaction videos like i said uh doing youtube content podcast whatever again you have the ability to have that safety track or have that internal recording and on top of that having the ability to have your audio already processed through the beacon studio and now one of my things and concerns is you probably don't want to touch the eq bands you probably just want them flat depending on how 
the differences in people's voices and stuff, obviously. So what I would do is just use the microphone gain, the noise suppression, and let's say the expander, and I would say also the compressor or wherever in there and never touch the EQ bands or wherever, because again, everybody's voice is different. And if for whatever reason you needed to, with the Comica of the M40s, at least you can use that audio and then go in and EQ. The only thing you have to do is sync it up in post. So again, I'm not trying to push anybody to spend a whole bunch of money on an audio setup or anything like that it's just me bouncing ideas off of people so they can get creative with if they are going to get the beacon studio and they're going to be making different types of content and stuff like that more ways to just use it other than just sitting at your desk and streaming and being like man i want to do reaction videos i want to change around my scenery and stuff like that and then they have to run a long cable or maybe it's hard for them to sit two people down at the desk or wherever the waiter positioned and stuff like that you can get a camera with a tripod record you know saying or run an hdmi cable or something like that to your pc and then you know have your content that you're going to react to on a tv or something like that and it's recording you and you're using obs to record your camera and your actual display or wherever so you're recording the video but then you can use the microphones wirelessly you see what i'm saying like all these ideas are just flowing off the top of my head and it's like this is a really cool opportunity for those who can afford it and on top of that take advantage of it so that's the reason why i'm bringing it to people's attention it's not so you can go out and spend a whole bunch of money but if you are interested in using this setup or wherever and you and you can take advantage of it and you don't mind spending a little bit extra money for this, I will have affiliate links down in the description. You can take advantage of it. You don't have to use my affiliate links if you don't want to. If you still think that I'm just trying to get people to spend money, that's fine. But I still think, again, somebody out there could benefit from this. So I think it should be brought to people's attention. Now, people would say, well, I can use this with, let's say, the Wave XLR and do the same thing or wherever and get wireless. Uh, if I would say audio and all that stuff and apply VSCs and plugins, I would be very careful on using devices like that because I've had it happen to me multiple times before. I've talked about my headaches with the Wave XLR. I've had it crash on me while I was recording and doing the VSTs and stuff applied so I didn't have to EQ it in my software. And I went to go ahead and edit the video and there was no audio because the program had crashed on my computer. And with the Beacon Studio at least and other devices like it that have onboard processing, if you have have that kind of stuff you don't have to worry about that happening because it's being processed on the actual device itself not your computer so again even so if that's the case and something unforeseen happened with the beacon studio with the comica Vim, uh, vm40s and any other devices that have 32-bit float and internal recording you would still have that backup track and that's the importance of this whole setup or wherever is being able to expand the types of content you can do as well as making sure that you have a backup of a backup and you're doing less work and stuff like that on the on the off chance that something does happen again you have the backup so hopefully that helps out somebody out there now back to past squid to wrap up the video this combo again it's going to be expensive because beacon studio is overpriced but i think what comica has with the vim uh, with the vm 40 or wherever especially that combo pack is it's pretty good i would say for the price and when you're talking about semi-professional audio and stuff and what it can do it's really good and i already like the comica vm30 i've reached out to him to get that combo pack because i would love to use it in the future when me and my wife decide to start sitting down and doing videos or wherever again i don't know if i want to use lavalier systems or this type of microphone because i love comica's audio and stuff from the vm30 and i know the vm40 is just going to be even better because that 32-bit float and stuff so again i want to say thank you to stream gear talk it doesn't roll off the tongue or wherever it's really difficult to even wrap my head around saying the name but I want to say thank you i have to give credit to him because he's pretty much what sparked the idea of me talking to uh jack or wherever about it in my live stream and we came up with this idea but the adapter that he recommended or wherever was a more expensive one from road and if you look at the one that i use it's from movo and it is um a lot cheaper i got it because of black friday sale or wherever for like 11 bucks and it does have a uh i would say a ring to it or wherever when you plug it into the beacon studio a lot of people kind of complained about it in some of the reviews or wherever depending on the signal source or wherever of whatever xlr interface you're putting into but what i have done i had one lying around or wherever i actually have two of them but i had one lying around extra and what i got is a ground loop uh Atalyzer or something like that whatever it's called i'll leave a link in the description as far as like all the equipment to get this up and running and um 
it completely got rid of that buzzing noise or wherever. I'm not even going to subject you guys to it. Just know that it is uh, very apparent and it's uh, headache inducing. So make sure that you have one of those if you're going to use this device. And I would say it's always good to have one of those ground loop things or wherever lying around just in case, no matter what, um, because it can it can definitely help you out. And yeah, like I said, wireless microphone to sit around, walk around. That webcam I was using earlier is the OnSpot uh, Tiny 2. And I don't have like it set up correctly or wherever. I just re-put it up back up or wherever, but it's using my dancing camera. But essentially you can use a wireless lavalier system. You can use this wireless microphone. You can have the, the actual OnSpot camera or any pan, zoom and tilt camera, wherever it will follow you around. And again, you can have your microphone EQ'd once you dial it in. It's just with this, you're gonna have to be careful with handling noise and how much you move and stuff like that because you don't want to get that into the audio. Even with the Comica BM30, uh, BM40, I imagine, you're gonna want to be careful with the handling noise and stuff. But yeah, essentially, this is what I found out and I think it's pretty cool. Unfortunately, with this setup, I still can't run my AC unit. It's just because, like I said, the noise suppression, uh, it's just, it's not good. And I did follow what Jack said, and that's what I did wherever pretty much in my testing was trying to run the NVIDIA broadcast or wherever um, as the Beacon Studio mic and having the Beacon Studio mic go into the NVIDIA broadcast. But because like I said, it's doing the background noise removal after your microphone and all that stuff is EQ'd. I never, I, out of all the 13 microphones I tested with the idea, none of them was to my liking i was still hearing some stuff and it was distorting the audio in a way that wasn't usable when i brought it into my editing software so again i wouldn't use the nvidia broadcast system or wherever with something like this but i think you can get the audio to be bearable and usable if you dial in the settings and i've sat here for like an hour dialing in the settings for this and i'll go over those settings now so i'll end the video there y'all take care have a squid task today God bless you and yours and deuces. I just kind of wanted to bring this thing to you guys. I think it's just really cool. The Beacon Studio with a wireless microphone. It's pretty cool. So we're talking about the Comica VM30 here with the stepless gain on the actual microphone set to seven. The wireless module is set to 0%. And then you can see the average peaking area. So we could probably adjust the dB of the volume or whatever but it's set to 27 percent with the noise suppression on adaptive with the amount of 65 and the sensitivity of 65 and then we have the expander set to 50 with the expand amount of 35 usually i have it on 33 and then the compressor is set to negative 27 with a compressed amount of 33 percent and then you can see obviously where i am landing as far as the reflection of my voice it goes up and down but it's okay because of the type of microphone this is and how close it is to me we don't really need that much of a makeup gain just because we don't want to overpower our editing software with the volume and then when we upload it to youtube youtube is going to have to crush it so we don't really want to do that because again with the youtube uh i would say algorithm and stuff like that you want to be around this this peak or db or wherever is usually 14 as high as you want to go so it's okay to go a little bit over in some parts of your video but again 15 16 it should be fine and then for the uh makeup gain is about point uh, 3.0 and then the output gain is around 1.8 and you can probably hear my son crying in the background my wife is trying to get stuff ready because she has some friends coming over so again you could probably still hear that in the background there's nothing that I can do here in the software to really uh, compensate for that because again noise suppression versus background noise removal it is what it is